Alright guys, today we're going to be replacing these rear bushings on this rear axle of my 2001 Volkswagen Golf. So, before you get started, make sure the vehicle is safely supported on jack stands. I have them right here. And on the other side, remember, safety first. One of the first steps here would be to spray this um, brake line fitting. Let it soak. Same with the other side. And we can move on to remove these um, e-brake cables. Okay, now that that's removed, do the same thing the other side. And I'm choosing to remove the whole uh, rear axle because I'm going to paint it because it's, it's pretty badly rusted. So I'm going to paint this, so I'm going to remove the whole thing. So my next step would be to remove the clip on the caliper down here to remove this cable. That just snaps right off. Do the same thing to the other side. Next step would be to pull this cable back through and you'll have to slowly work this rubber boot around with a screwdriver to push it through because this one end is a little wider than the ribbed section. So slowly work it. And be careful not to cut the rubber boot. There we go, just like that. And now we can remove this clip right here. It's a little tricky. If you look underneath it, you can see those tabs right here. You have to pry these away from the threaded part so that you can actually release the cable from the clip. Now you can get new ones, but I'm not. These are in good shape. You'll just have to bend these tabs back when you go to reinstall. But if you don't want to, you can get new ones. They're, they're cheap. And just uh, you can just pry these off and you don't have to care about them, but I'm going to reuse them. All right, there we go. Now for the last part, this cable, just slowly pry this little piece down here. There we go. Let the cable rest, like so, and on to the next step. The next step is going to be to remove this clip. And if you see this top piece here, you need to lift this up a little bit, and then just pull it straight back. You have to wiggle it a little bit. There we go. And then you'll have to pop this part out and just pull it towards you. It might take a little bit of force, but uh, just be careful with it. Okay, I just tucked the wire up out of the way like so. And now I'm going to move to the other side.
One thing I noticed with this side is this clip is flipped over so that tab is underneath. I don't understand that, but uh, that's the way this side is. So this side was a little trickier actually since this tab was underneath the connector. So I had to get under there with a screwdriver and get access to that clip so that I could pull it out. But I got it. So now we do the same thing over here, just pop this part out and just hang it up here out of the way. Next step is going to be to remove this lower shock bolt. It's 16 millimeter. Okay, now you're going to need your jack to release the pressure because this won't um, come out of this mount unless you put your jack under here to release this pressure. So that's the next step. Okay, I'm going to jack this up until I see that this is loose. It won't take too much. There we go. That's it. You lower the jack then. And now do the same thing for the other side. Okay, now we can remove these rear springs. This is fairly easy. Now what you have to do is push down on this axle and these should really just come right out like this. So you can set those aside and do the same thing. For the other side. The next step is to remove this brake line. This is 11 millimeter. So have some rags ready because you will lose fluid. All right, that's it for that one. Now we can go to the other side. All right, this one is a little different. You can see it's up above instead of down below. So again, it's the same thing, 11 millimeter. That's why it's important to have these sprayed with the penetrant oil so that they loosen up easily for you. Well, I had a little issue here. The brake line wouldn't spin, or the the brake line was so corroded inside here that it was spinning with this fitting and it just twisted as you can see and it broke so I need to get a new line here that goes back to the caliper. Alright guys, the next step is going to be to remove this clip that holds this small uh, rubberized flex line to the uh, rear axle here. So this you have to get a screwdriver or something and uh, just slowly work it back towards the front of the vehicle and it will pop right out and release that line. Give you a better view here. 
can see that clip right there. I'm slowly moving it back and then it will release this line. Okay, you can see this clip that's released. This brake line here should be free and it should pop right down. There we go. Now we can go over to the other side and do the same thing. You can see I'm on the driver's side now. There's this clip holding this line on, and it just pops down towards the uh, garage floor here. Just slowly work it, and it will pop loose. There we go. So this line will pull out and just hang free. Now the next step would be to remove these big bolts holding the axle on in the front. These are 18 millimeter. You can see I'm ready to remove this bolt. Um, you can clearly tell this bushing is shot um, anyways, I have an open-ended wrench or an uh, adjustable wrench on this side. It's 18 millimeter holding the nut. And if you come around this side, what you'll have to do is move this inner fender out of the way to get access to the head of that bolt. And then go ahead and put your 18 millimeter socket there and then slowly loosen it up. And this should stay wedged here holding that nut. So we'll go ahead and do this now and remove this bolt. Okay, this is what the bolt looks like when it's out. As you can see, this side is out. I just have one more side to do. Make sure that's out of the way and uh, do the same thing over here. You can see I'm ready to pull this last bolt out here. Just uh, be careful because this thing will drop. The passenger side already fell there. And uh, this thing is pretty heavy. I'm not sure the, uh, what the weight is, but it is, it is heavy. So just be careful and uh, watch your hands and uh, everything. You don't want to get hurt. Okay, here we go. All right, it is out.
And now for the fun part to get these bushings out. You can see I got the inside of this bushing out. I still have to get this uh, metal ring out. But here's the guts of it. That's what it looks like. All you really need to do, I left this side in here. But you need to drill a couple holes and then I have a four pound sledge. I just beat the crap out of it from this side. Eventually it came out. I just finished cutting this um, piece out right here. You just get a sawzall, cut it out. Just be careful not to cut this part. As you can see, this is what it looks like before. So just get your saws on here and slowly cut through there. Take your time. And then you'll get a screwdriver. You can see the way this is mangled up here. I just got a screwdriver and uh, beat on it. And then this frees it up and you can pound it out. Before we install these new bushings, we have to make sure the inside is really clean and free of any debris, any rust. I already started to clean this side. As you can see, it's a little shinier. I'm using a wire brush on a drill and uh, just going around the inside all the way around, making sure that it's, it's free, there aren't any burrs or anything, so that the bushing can uh, be pressed in easily also have the bushings in the freezer right now um, so hopefully that will help in pressing them in so uh, it is hot out here it's around uh, 94 degrees so this is nice and warm which will help in pressing this bushing in this is all nice and cleaned up I put a light coating of grease on the inside and this is my setup. I have a series of washers, some all thread, a couple nuts. So what I'm going to do is I have this uh, large spacer here because the bushing gets pressed in from this side and we'll have some sticking out. So you need uh, a spacer larger than the diameter of the bushing itself. So I have this laying around. It's a piece of pipe. So I have this big washer here and um, I'm ready to go get the bushing. It's in the freezer, so I'm gonna go get that now. So here's the bushing. I chose to upgrade to the Seat Leone Cupra R style bushing. As you can see that yellow uh, paint marker there. They mark that so you know which way to install this thing. So this part here will go on the um, bottom near the weld. So if I take this out, lift this up here to show you, that mark will go right here, line it up right here on this bottom part of the weld. All right. So let's go ahead and get this thing lined up and ready to be pressed in. Okay, I got the bushing started to go in here. This is the trickiest part. Once you get it started to go in, it, sometimes it might want to twist on you, but uh, stop, don't, don't keep going, and you might have to tap it. I use the hammer to tap it either way to uh, straighten it out, and then once you get it going in straight, it'll continue to go in nicely. And um, I actually took that spacer out temporarily because it was giving me some issue. So I just put this uh, bigger washer on, as you can see, the back side here. Uh, this is just condensating now because it's so humid out here and this thing was in the freezer, so that's why that's wet.
Okay, as you can see, I'm to the point where I need the spacer. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this in between here and then continue pressing the rest of the way. Okay, I got one done. Everything went well. It was actually uh, easier than I thought it was going to be. So I have this side to do. Just make sure it's nice and clean on the inside before you uh, attempt this. You don't want any burrs or anything to hold you up. And then apply that light coat of grease and uh, press it right on in. It's a good idea to have a wide variety of things. Um, spacers, washers, uh, even a spare piece of all thread. But uh, yeah, just take your time with it and uh, you'll get it. Now before I install this uh, axle here, I'm going to paint it. I gave it a quick uh, wire brush with the uh, drill. And now I'm going to use this stuff. I've never used it. Can paint over rusted and bare metal um, so we'll see how well it works the rear axle is ready to go back in it's nicely painted it turned out pretty well the only thing that doesn't look good are these dust shields but I'll worry about those at a later date because you have to take off um, the rotor and then the uh, wheel bearing itself so it's kind of a pain just to replace the dust shield but I'm gonna leave it go for now but other than that, it looks pretty good. I also replaced these plastic clips here to hold the brake line in place. I'll have the, all the part numbers up in the description. But that's what they look like. And then don't forget, I had to take these out because I painted this. But um, this is, these just, squeeze in like this and then you push them into place. This holds your emergency brake cable or your parking brake cable, whatever you want to call it. And then there's one on the other side as well. Like I said, the only reason I took it out was to paint it. But installation is basically the reverse process of removal. <clears throat> so it shouldn't be too bad. Okay guys, this last item that needs to go on this axle is this little plastic piece. I guess this is some sort of uh, wind deflector or air deflector. But if you look on the bottom, it has this uh, little piece right here which goes in this hole right here so I took this out to uh, paint the axle but you guys might not have to do this but since I was at it I just decided to go ahead and paint the thing alright so once you get that snapped down in there then you take this top part and you'll have to maneuver it down inside and gently push it in and once it hits the, the stop here then you take this other plastic piece the solid part is the part that points up and you take this and just push it all the way in just wiggle a little bit might need a hammer to uh, slightly tap that in. Okay, once it's flush, then you are good to go. So that completes that part. I managed to muscle this uh, left side up in here and I managed to slide the bolt through. 
use one arm to grab the rear beam and move it around and then uh, once this hole got lined up I was able to put the bolt in through. It took a few times but I managed to do it by myself. As you can see the other side is just hanging there and I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay for this right side I was able to get my jack under here with a block of wood and slowly lift this side up and into place and then I was able to slide the bolt through and put the nut on the other side. It was a little challenging over here on this side. Uh, make sure you remove this hanger for your parking brake cable or else you'll destroy it when you put the jack under there. So um, yeah, just take your time with it and uh, it is a little frustrating but you'll get it in there. Okay guys, I have everything back together. Everything snug. Um, these lower shock bolts here will need torque now since we have the suspension loaded. These get torqued to 30 foot-pounds. Always use uh, new bolts and nuts here. Uh, so torque these to 30 foot-pounds. Once your torque wrench clicks, do an additional quarter turn. That completes that for both sides. And now for the uh, front bushing here. This bolt, it's torqued to uh, 59 foot-pounds. So what I have is uh, this extension here. This is, let's see, this is a 10 inch extension. It gets you out far from the uh, rear wheel and then you'll have to hold this inner nut. Uh, it's 18 millimeter. I'm going to get in there with a um, adjustable wrench and hold that while I torque these down. Okay guys, that completes everything. Everything is torqued down. Don't forget to bleed your brake lines if you disconnected them. That's what I'm going to do next. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty involved job. Um, hopefully this video helped out. If so, hit that like button, share it with your friends, and please subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.